This is Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. From the corporate office to the cab of a truck, they're here to inspire and empower women in all professions. So gear down, sit back, and enjoy. Welcome to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. We're a show that works to inspire and empower women in trucking in the trades and every profession. We tackle all kinds of topics and work to encourage women to be their very best with informative guests and women who've been champions. I'm Shelley. And I'm Kathy. No topic is taboo on our rig. We tackle the tough topics along with the not so tough topics. And we like to feature experts and celebrities who can assist women in being the very best they can be. Seasonal Affective Disorder, or SAD, is a type of depression that occurs every autumn and winter when the days are shorter and dark. It can also occur other times as well. Women are four times more likely than men to be impacted by SAD. We wanted to learn more about this, so we invited the doctor who coined the term Seasonal Affective Disorder in 1984. Dr. Norman Rosenthal is a world-renowned psychiatrist, researcher, and clinical professor of psychiatry at Georgetown University School of Medicine. He's listed as one of the best doctors in America. He's also the author of Winter Blues, Everything You Need to Know to Beat Sad. He recently released a book called Defeating Sad, A Guide to Health and Happiness Through All Seasons. Welcome, Dr. Rosenthal. Thank you so much for being on the show with us today. Well, thank you so much for that lovely introduction. Well, thank you so much for being with us, Dr. Rosenthal. I'm I'm just so very impressed with you and your credentials, and I know that you're going to really be able to give our listeners some serious information on this condition, which affects a lot of people. And I want to commend you on making that major discovery back in 1984. You kind of unraveled some of the mystery surrounding SAD. Yes, you know, we've this now is 40 years plus uh, of working on the field and in regard to particular patients, but also in the research domain. And so it's been a real adventure, and I'm so glad to be around to see uh, the thing come full arc as so many people now recognize it in themselves and are able to actually do something to help themselves and even prevent it. What exactly causes seasonal affective disorder? You know, I say it's like a three-legged stool. One leg of it is genetics. Another leg of it is a lack of light. And the third one is stress. So if you have a genetic inclination to the condition, if you don't get enough light, which often happens in the autumn and winter, and if you're stressed, and I would wager that some of the people listening in agree with being in that category. I've just heard what it takes to drive the very big trucks that some of you folks drive. And I'm so admira- I'm so impressed by the effort that that takes and the courage, really. Um, but if you are in a time of the year when you're not feeling your best, you're vulnerable to things going wrong, then you might have a perfect storm if you have the genes, the stress, and the lack of light. How do you know if you have the genes or that condition? You don't know for sure, but often there's a clue of some members of the family who always hated the winter, who always wanted to go south or cuddled up under the comforter during a winter day. If you have those kinds of relatives in your family, it is a suggestion that there may be a common gene. But so far, that gene has not yet been identified. Okay. Interesting. Well, I know that I'm not fond of winter. It it just is too monochromatic for me. Everything's kind of in black and white because you've got snow on the ground and all the trees are bare. And I am a sunshine person. So I don't like it. I don't know if I necessarily have sad, but I don't, I don't like that time of year. You know, the interesting thing to me about SAD is there's a big spectrum from people who just don't like the winter and are not as inspired and energetic in the winter to those who really are disabled. 
you know, and then there are people maybe who just don't like it. So, and the, anybody's entitled not to like something. It doesn't mean you've got a disorder. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes, it's a kind of minor form of what we call the winter blues that's getting people down in the winter time. Interesting. Is this kind of also um, people who have, say, dementia and so forth can be affected more at certain times of the year by what they call sundowner syndrome. Would this be kind of part of that? Or is that something that's a totally different issue? We think, sun, we think sundowner syndrome is a little different from this. It's the end of the day and people tend to get confused. Okay. The yeah. light is bright. You don't see exactly what's going on. And it's easier to misinterpret things and lose orientation. That makes sense. Yeah. Now, with seasonal affective disorder, what's actually happening in the brain? Obviously, there's something where we need more light. Well, there are various theories. Nobody knows for sure. Uh, but one theory, of course, is that the genetic part of the brain, there is a part of the brain that's directly affected by light. Now, imagine there's something wrong with that part of the brain that could make a difference. Or there's a hormone called melatonin which is secreted at night. It's very important for seasonal rhythms throughout the animal kingdom. And that could be a part of the problem. And the light, the eyes themselves may be as not as sensitive as they normally are. And that may impact the amount of light getting to the brain, not only getting into the eye. Interesting. Why are more women than men impacted by sad. I find that rather curious. You know, I think that historically, women probably evolved to be more seasonal because the whole becoming pregnant, giving birth cycle is probably needed to align with the seasons. You want to give birth to your young when there's the weather is better and there's a lot of food around and you know that that will give you the winter in which to carry the baby and maybe hide in the cave or i'm talking you know long long ago and also uh, other female animals who have got to go through the cycle and want to give birth to their young when there's a lot of food around so i think that the seasonality of pregnancy giving birth, feeding your children, feeding your babies is probably evolved so that women are more seasonal than men. That makes sense. Well, if you yeah. look at the animal kingdom, that's when in the springtime is when you see all the little baby bunnies and all of the young. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Now, you know, some of that depends upon the gestation period of the particular species. Right. For example, uh, with sheep, it's best for them to be fertile in the winter so that they have the four months of pregnancy and give birth in the spring. Mm -hmm. But for animals with much shorter gestation periods, um, it's better if they are more fertile in the spring and summer. So in any event, we're, we're going far away from humans. I think that in general, uh, women are more seasonal than men um, in their rhythms. And this gets caught onto the seasonal rhythm more easily in women than in men. But but one in four or one in five of the uh, people with SAD, SAD, actually is a male. So go figure. Interesting. I find it, uh, I work um, up in northern Canada. And um, it's like when I say north, I mean northwest territories, way north. Mm. And I work for two weeks at a time. So I'll work for a set of uh, days for two weeks, 13 hour days, and then I'll go home. And then when I come back, I work two weeks of 13 hour nights. Now, my question to you is, number one, I have a few questions. Number one is working night shift. Does that affect, does that have a direct play, do you think, with the SAD? I think it does because, you know, most of us get our sunlight during the day. And if you're working the night shift, then you're sleeping during the day. So you're going to basically be deprived of sunlight. 
And if you have a vulnerability to SAD, I would think that that would play into that. So um, what about, because night shift, I mean, we're not designed to work night shift. So poor sleep, you're, because I, I have to black out my windows, but half the time, you know, I'll wake up, I'll wake up three, four times and I'm falling asleep and I'm, I'm exhausted. Does fatigue also have, do you think has a part to play in that? Oh, it's definitely because fatigue is one of the symptoms of SAD. So if you're fatigued for some other reason, maybe because you haven't been getting enough sleep or bad sleep, yeah. uh, sleep circumstances that aren't conducive to a good night's sleep, plus you've got the winter problem, you'd have a double dose of the problem. Okay, well, that makes sense, right? Okay, so the next question is, well, be, being so far north, the, the daylight... Um, when we're on night shift, like starting November all the way through February, beginning March, we have zero daylight. So when when I'm working night shift, I don't ha I don't see the sun for two weeks. So I'll get up at three in the afternoon and it's dark outside, and then um, I'll come back in the morning at seven o'clock in the morning, excuse me, <clears throat> and it's still dark outside. So not only am I working under extreme duress because working in an open pit mine with the largest mining equipment in the world is very stressful. Um, the, the shifts are long. Um, I'm under, like when I'm at work 13 hours, I have to be alert the entire time because there's so much going on and it's um, such a dangerous job in, in many different ways. So I have the stress. I have, I'm fatigued all the time. I'm not sleeping properly. Um, the night shift, I, there's no no sunlight. Um, it's depressing up here. It's it's very it's, it's very, the cold is really cold. When I when I say cold in the winter, I mean minus fifty six for three weeks straight. Like it's so cold. So there's a lot going on. Not to mention, you know, you have life problems and you have things going on at home. But you you're really you're stuck up here for two weeks. So you don't have I don't have my phone when I'm at work. I don't have nothing. So it's really um, I have eight hamsters and one wheel going on in my noggin, right? <laughs> so do you think, and, and I, I noticed, like for me, I, I'm pretty good at trying to keep myself um, balanced by exercise and proper diet. And, you know, my spirituality is a big thing that keeps me balanced. But there's a lot of my coworkers that uh, aren't quite like that. So, and I, and I notice, I look at them and they have various mood swings. So do you think all of this that I'm, that I'm mentioning has a big part to play in um, whether or not you'd be more susceptible to, C, to SAD? Well, I think it's interesting because I don't think one would really take the job in the first place if one was too vulnerable. <laughs> It's the you paycheck. Know. It's the paycheck. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, you might find a job further south, you know, or something that had a little more life. I, I don't argue the importance of the paycheck. Believe me, we all we all we all need it. Um, yeah. But but I think that it may be that people who are very tough in regard to their daily rhythms, etc. Um, are more likely to take jobs that are so tough. But I think even those people like, like you, you know, would perhaps benefit from some of the things that I mentioned in Defeating SAD, some of the ways that you can mitigate the problem. Because one of the discoveries that my colleagues and I made in relation to SAD is that it's the lack of light that is so instrumental in the illness. And mm -hmm. the good news about that is that there is a, a remedy that it suggests immediately in the form of replacing more light. So I think if you could figure out when that extra light would do you the most good, uh, you could possibly add it to your list of methods of overcoming this very rigorous lifestyle uh, you say you do you do exercise which is obviously fabulous um, light may be something to add to your exercise in terms of getting the most impact uh, and something to think about
my coworker, it's interesting that you mentioned that uh, a girl that used to work here, she no longer does. Uh, she was very sensitive to mental health, you know, problems and um, just lots going on in her life. And so she was very affected by this working up here in the winter time she's from uh, the vancouver island where you know it's never cold and it's beautiful mm -hmm. and it's almost like tropical and mm -hmm. then she comes up to these never seen snow and then she come up to work up here in these intense and harsh conditions and she 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 couldn't handle it she was very very her moods would just fluctuate and um she'd be emotional and crying and um, she she figured out that's what she had because knowing the season was coming of darkness and cold like it would throw her over the edge so she brought up uh, a light like light therapy I guess right that's exactly right mm -hmm. and she brought one up here for her room but the, um, the problem was is that we don't have time <laughs> to uh, I guess reap the benefits of that i guess would be the proper way to say that because number one you're trying to sleep right you're trying to catch up on your sleep because the you know you need your your mental focus so when like i have to get up today i got up at 3 30 but normally i would get up around 2 30 because if i want to get time to make it to the gym and have you know some exercise because we sit for 13 hours a day or we get bounced around and roughly in these pieces of equipment i need yoga i need to stretch i need to walk you know i need to you know do exercise um so you try and fit that in you got to go and make your lunch you got to you know try and respond to emails and try and catch up and do things well where does the time for her light fact the, the light treatment come in so she what she would do she would have it by her bedside um and use it like half an hour before she slept and when she would lay there and half an hour when she woke up do you think that but in the end it, she ended up having to quit the job it, it was just too much for her to handle but yeah it doesn't sound like a good fit to me but i think that there are ways of combining the light to minimize the inconvenience one is something called a dawn simulator, and that sort of slowly turns light on in the morning or in your effective morning. If you have to get up at five o'clock in the morning and it's the middle of winter, then mm -hmm. you create an artificial dawn, say, between 4.30 and 5, so that by the time you wake up, you've tricked your brain into thinking that it's now dawn and the, oh. light, the sun is rising. So, and that's, that actually can work. So the other thing is to try to add the light to whatever it is you're doing. So let's say you're walking outside and let's say it's morning and the sun has risen already. You can look up at the sky, not directly at the sun, and you can get quite a bit of light just from the clouds. Um, or you can, if you're doing a, maybe an extra cycle, you can do it in front of a light box. So there are ingenious ways of combining light and exercise in a way that can be very, very helpful. Oh, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned for more of Women Road Warriors coming up. Industry movement Trucking Moves America Forward is telling the story of the industry. Our safety champions? the women of trucking, independent contractors, the next generation of truckers, and more. Help us promote the best of our industry. Share your story and what you love about trucking. Share images of a moment you're proud of and join us on social media. Learn more at truckingmovesamerica.com. Welcome back to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. Seasonal affective disorder impacts women four times more than men. Dr. Norman Rosenthal coined the term SAD in 1984. He's a world-renowned psychiatrist, researcher, and clinical professor who just published the book Defeating SAD, a guide to health and happiness through all seasons. Dr. Rosenthal says there are ways to fight SAD. 
You can use things like a dawn simulator to trick the brain into thinking it's morning if you work odd shifts. You can add light to what you're doing. When you walk outside, you can look at the sky. Or if you're in the office, have a light box next to you. Dr. Rosenthal, so the light, does it activate a part of the brain? Um, does it? Oh, um... that was my next question. <laughs> like, What part of the brain does that work? <laughs> yeah. You know, there are some specific parts of the brain that the light activates. And one of the, the, the book that I've written, Defeating Sad, it's very short and compact. But I managed to get one diagram in that shows the light coming in through the eye, and then it goes different ways. It can go to a very central way station called the hypothalamus that mediates activity and mediates your daily rhythms, and that can influence mood. But more recently, they found a completely separate pathway. It's a short circuit that goes straight from the retina in the eye to a part of the brain that immediately helps people feel better. And so there are these different pa uh, brain parts, then they've isolated them in rats and rodents. Uh, they are directly and indirectly activated by light. Now, what does this actually do? Does it change some neurochemicals? Uh, does it activate endorphins? What does it do in the brain? That's a great question. And yes, we do believe it, it affects neurochemicals, and we don't know exactly which ones, but the neurochemical serotonin, which is the one that's influenced by drugs like Zoloft and Prozac, that neurochemical appears to be very tied up with seasonal rhythms. So my friend, going back to her, she was on antidepressants. So Okay. So does that, would that have just made things, um, she'd be more sensitive to the seasonal affective disorder because of the antidepressants? No, the antidepressants are probably protective. Uh, okay. Antidepressants are helpful for all kinds of depression. And remember, seasonal affective disorder, when you have a bad case, is like one kind of depression. And it can be very much helped by medications. It sounds okay. as though that your friend was really doing a lot of the right things. She just maybe took a job that wasn't quite right for her. It sounds as though you are so able to handle this incredibly difficult job, but most people probably would have a hard time with it. Yes, it is. It's very, very difficult. It's not meant for everyone. We've seen a lot of people come and go. I've been here for 10 years now and, um, yeah, it's 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 something else, I tell you. You're definitely uh, a road warrior, Kathy. No <laughs> about that. Yep. <laughs> That's why I bought a Jeep Gladiator. There I'm you go. <laughs> there you go. Where do you live, Kathy? Where's home? For uh, Los you? Angeles. I have. Oh to. my God. Okay. <laughs> Quite a contrast. <laughs> I know. Uh -huh. Well, it's almost as if. My innate, like in deep inner self is searching the sunshine and, and, you know, the sand and the, the relaxation because my job is so intense. But the thing is, um, doctor, it's because it's, uh, we get, I work two weeks of, in, of difficulties, but I also get two weeks off right after. And then I get six weeks vacation every year at my choosing. So I'm only mm -hmm. up here part time, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not, you know. <laughs> But um, well, yeah. you know, I, I would I would speculate, although I have no right to do so, that you will not have this job forever. No, no, I'm coming up to 55 next year and I have 10 years in. So I'm allowed to take early retirement and I'm seriously, seriously considering it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it sounds like you've got tons of energy and good, good spirits. So um, you obviously that I do. have been yep. well equipped. <laughs> well equipped for the hardship of the job which is excellent now light therapy uh, i know that they've had light therapy for sad for some time but there are different types of light boxes now aren't there dr rosenthal absolutely you know one of the you know one of the biggest problems people have is they go onto amazon and they look for a light and they see a nice cheap light that says it's got 10,000 lux, that's a measurement of light, 
that we've found to be effective. And it's much cheaper than a bigger box. But the trouble is that these teeny weeny boxes just don't give you as much light. And so you can easily then conclude, well, this is not for me. Light therapy doesn't work. But what you've done is you've gotten this very rinky-dink box. And that's why in the book, I show various pictures of different light boxes. And in fact, what I say is that every research study that's shown effects of light has used a light that's got a front of at least one foot square. And that is uh, a feature that I therefore recommend. So all the boxes that I've recommended in the book at least have that amount of frontage and not these tiny little lights. And the tiny little lights are often very cute and attractive. It's like, you know, the little doggy in the window. It's just that you can't resist it, but they're not as good as the bigger, albeit more ugly light boxes. Okay. So do you have to sit in front of it or is it just having it close to you that will give you benefit? Oh, that's a great question. No, you have to, it come, the effect comes in through the eyes. So I remember one client I had uh, and I said, you know, sit in front of the lights for, you know, 30 minutes or whatever it was uh, each morning. And she did sit in front of the lights, but the trouble was the lights were behind her. Oh, dear. So she wasn't oh. getting any light. Oh. So, yes, it's very important that you sit in front of the light, but that the light be turned in your direction. Now, what do you say to people who say, gee, I don't have 30 minutes to be sitting in one place staring at a light? Is that just something that they need to be disciplined about if they want to feel better? Well, you know, it's not an all or none thing. Sometimes 10 or 15 minutes can do a lot of good. And... um so sometimes that can do a lot of good. And, you, you know, you can supplement 10 or 15 minutes by going outside. And I say it again, you know, a, a, a cloudy day, that cloud is giving off a lot of light. Mm -hmm. So just get, look up at the lights, you have your 15 minutes. And, you, you know, the fact is most of us can fit in. Uh, the, the 15 minutes doesn't have to be done exactly at the same time. Uh, one really good thing is to have it at your desk if you're a desk worker or an office worker, because yeah. then you can have as much as you need. And but but I think people get creative. There is, in fact, um, a head mounted light device, although that hasn't been as well tested as the one that sits on your desktop or table. Now, see, that would be something that would be good for me. I never was good at sitting still as a child. So mm -hmm. <laughs> sitting for 30 minutes in front of a light box would probably be hard for me to do. Well, I've got an old friend who's very, very knowledgeable about this area. And she said, my headlamp broke, <laughs> meaning her light there, the light that she put on her head. My headlamp broke. Um, where can I get another headlamp? I said, well, look, you know, I don't know. So I said, why don't you try a box? She said, well, because I move around all the time. So the next thing I heard from her, she said, I went on the web and I found a headlamp and I'm doing great. So terrific. there you are. She solved her own problem. That's terrific. Stay tuned for more of Women Road Warriors coming up. Trucking Moves America Forward, or TMAF, is building a positive image of trucking by telling the story of the hardworking drivers and industry professionals who support the industry. And you can be a part of it. Learn more about TMAF and how you can join and be a part of the industry movement working to build a strong image of trucking by visiting TMAF's website at truckingmovesamerica.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and our latest channel, TikTok. Welcome back to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. Seasonal affective disorder is something that impacts many people, with symptoms coming on as the days get shorter. Serotonin is suspected of having an impact on SAD as it appears to be tied to seasonal rhythms. 
We're learning a lot about seasonal affective disorder as we talk with Dr. Norman Rosenthal, a world-renowned expert on the subject. He coined the term SAD in 1984. He's also the author of a new book called Defeating SAD, a guide to health and happiness through all seasons. Dr. Rosenthal, I'm seeing in your notes here that you recommend white over blue light? Uh, Yes, some people have used blue light, but there's no evidence that it's any better than white light. And in fact, there is some evidence of blue light toxicity, that it, it hurts the various elements in the eye. So I think regular white light, that's what's been used in the research studies. To me, that's what's most comfortable, and therefore that's what I recommend. I know. I've been reading, uh, of course, I spent quite a bit of time in front of a computer that blue light is not really good for you. And that's what computer monitors put out. Right. And there are Mm -hmm. some programs that will block the blue light, which are quite good. They're not great. The other thing that blocks blue light is orange goggles. The UVEX goggles, U-V-E-X, will block blue light and... um, Sometimes if people are being staying up wake, late at night, the light is keeping them awake. If they use the orange goggles, it mitigates that trouble. Very cool. That'd be really cool to wear, too. <laughs> yeah, they are rather cool. Um, they are rather cool. And, uh, I've worn them myself, but it's very interesting because I can be up late at night and I'm doing all the things I shouldn't be doing, like checking the news and looking at uh, spelling games and various puzzles and things and Wikipedia, all kinds. And just, it's all delaying getting to bed, of course. And, uh, you know, I find if I'll put on those orange goggles, all of a sudden I'll feel sleepy. I won't be so interested in what's on the Wikipedia. And it's a nice way to wind yourself down. So any of you out there that are having trouble getting yourself settled down at night, Think about those orange goggles or the uh, programs that block the blue light on your computer. They're called, I think one of them is called E-Flux, E uh, period F-L-U-X. So check it out and uh, you need your sleep. We all do. Sleep is really, really crucial. Absolutely. Speaking of those goggles, here at work, we have these um, goggles that are... uh, yellow i guess and it, it it lightens everything up and they they recommend that we wear those at night shift and especially during the winter because it's not as dark and it, it's supposed to have well it's supposed to help obviously it does i've i've only used them once or twice i think it's more of a preference than anything else well now i'm blind as a bat so i need my my my, <laughs> my mm-hmm. prescription ones but um do you, what do you think about that like they're 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 it's type of yellow i can't i think they they're probably doing the same thing they're winding people down at the end of a day in fact in one study on people who became so revved up they actually were manic they used blue blocking goggles orange goggles at night and they actually settled these people down and they slept better and were less agitated and it's quite an interesting intervention for people who want to wind themselves down late at night. Interesting. Wow. That is interesting. Mm-hmm. Now, Dr. Rosenthal, I see that you also, if somebody is uh, impacted by SAD, you recommend things like stress management, exercise, as well as watching your diet. I know those are a number of different things, but did you want to touch on some of those points? Yeah, I really do, because... I think people think that they should use the lights and that's the end of the story. Mm -hmm. But we really need to maintain ourselves with these foundational habits. And yes, it applies to seasonal affective disorder and feeling good all year round. But really, it's just good health management. And, you know, your precious body is you only get one body and one brain And um, how you treat it is really, in most cases, going to determine what kind of life you have. Just like you wouldn't go banging around that amazing machine that you were describing to me. Um, The same applies to your body and your brain. So in my book, I talk about the things that people need to do 
to do that. They need to get adequate sleep. Uh, they need to uh, watch their diet. Um, you know, minimize sugar, which is turned out to be in a quite a dangerous substance uh, over time. Of course, not going to you're not going to drop dead from eating a pastry, but if you do that every single day, several times a day, then you may indeed drop dead. Um, so, in any event, uh, diet, exercise, uh, and one thing that is so wonderful to me is meditation. I love meditating. I do it every day and I do everything that I'm recommending to other people. I do every day. And when it comes to exercise, incidentally, it's not just aerobic. It's also strength training. That's so valuable as an antidepressant. Um, fascinating study done recently when they've looked at Alzheimer's and they found that people who walk 10,000 steps a day are half as likely to get Alzheimer's over a period of time than their counterparts. So really? yes, you would never think that that would be such a correlation, but yes, that's how powerful exercise is. Mm -hmm. You're circulating yep. the blood, you're moving it around your body and somehow it's doing you some good. So yep. I'm so glad you raised that question. You know, it's kind of interesting. My mother had, um, she actually survived having herpes encephalitis, which is a cold sore that goes to the brain and unfortunately, there were some lingering effects that did cause dementia down the road. But especially during the winter, she was affected by sundowner syndrome and so forth. She was quite the dancer in her 20s. And I decided maybe getting her some dance lessons would be helpful. And I would have the nurse's aide who was working with her take her to a dance lesson. I got her a series of them. And then during the week when she was not at the lesson there was some of her favorite music from when she was in her 20s and they would work with her on her dance steps. It made a huge difference. It was really amazing. That is a brilliant thing that you did because there is actually uh, data that shows exactly what you found. And that is that, you know, people who are quite um, degenerated in their mental capacity, people with Alzheimer's, they would play you know swing music from their youth and all of a sudden they were dancing and active and really engaged i saw an amazing show it was lady gaga um with tony bennett tony oh. bennett had alzheimer's and she brought him out onto the stage and he really could hardly remember her name or anything yeah. and yet when it's when it came to singing he was back on track it was quite amazing so yeah. we retain different kinds of memories uh, to a different degree and you did a great thing for mom to okay. engage her dancing and singing what joy that must have brought her it was fun and i remember actually it was around christmas she had the dance catalog and she showed me some stilettos that she wanted me to buy her um, sh shoes <laughs> for Christmas. It's like, well, fabulous. Uh, yeah, you're right. And I remember watching her dance lesson and she mm -hmm. was, she got herself up to about 45 minutes, a 45 wow. minute lesson. And she was actually telling the young instructor, he was doing it incorrectly. And I talked to the owner of the studio and she said, she's actually not incorrect. She uh -huh. learned a different way than he's I teaching see. her. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So she was correcting him. <laughs> That's, wow. That's so good. But, but you know, just for those those hours that she danced or sang or she got her joy back. You yep. know, she felt yeah. she was in the moment and she really enjoyed it. I think it's fantastic. Well, you know, you, you can see how many more people should be doing that kind of thing for their aging parents. Yep. Absolutely. So stress management, exercise, diet, all of these things and light therapy are all options that people can pursue if they have seasonal affective disorder. Exactly. There are two things I just want to mention. The first is cognitive behavior therapy. Okay. You know, okay. it's such a potent form of therapy. And of course, it's hard to find a therapist. But in one chapter, I just show you what the principles are behind this kind of therapy. And it means correcting uh, misinterpretations. You know, if somebody looks at you askance, you think, oh, 
that person doesn't like me and nobody actually likes me. Well, that could be completely incorrect. That person could have been having a bad day. And if you quiz somebody, you can find out that actually a lot of people do like you. And so those kinds of corrections systematically implemented can make a huge difference. So that's the one thing I wanted to mention. And the other is actually medications, like uh, your friend that, that had used the medications. They can be very effective. So really what I'm, I'm trying to communicate is that there's this potpourri, there's this combination of many good things that you can do so that nobody needs to suffer untreated and untended. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you mentioned in your list here of antidepressant medications. It does seem to me, I, I do a lot of reading on this sort of thing, there are a lot of people who are depressed. Do you think some of that could be sad? Definitely, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that's quite interesting and that I show in, in the book is that the lights can help people even who, if they don't have sad. But, but yes, a number of those people could have sad and the lights could help, all these other things could help people, even with regular depression. And you would I, think, oh, go ahead, Kathy. Oh, I was just going to say, do you, um, my friend, actually, this is something I'd like to talk about. Um, she was ridiculed for it. A lot of um, the co-workers thought she was just BSing and making it up and using it as an excuse. And, you know, she... Um, it was used in a negative way because a lot of people, they think it's a myth. They think it's just, oh, you're using that as another thing to feel sorry for yourself. You know how people are. Yeah. And do you, do you, do you come across that? Like, do other people talk about that? You, you know, I do come across that. And there's a lot, unfortunately, a lot of ignorance out there and nastiness. Um, because even if it were wrong, it would still be nasty if she believes it's helping her. But basically, I was ridiculed when I first brought the subject up. It seemed so crazy to so many people. And nowadays, I get ridiculed never. I never get ridiculed, and most of my people never get ridiculed. In fact, one of my clients is, is a trader on Wall Street, and he says, you couldn't believe the number of light boxes all around him on Wall Street because they all want to perform at their peak. So mm -hmm. they're, all, they're all using the lights. And when I first started, a colleague came up to me at a meeting and said, oh, come, let's, let's stand underneath the light over here. I'm already feeling depressed. So she was, she was pulling my leg. But now, um, you know, hardly anybody I know ever ridicules anybody um, because it's just so well established. Mm -hmm. Well, sad is really a debilitating condition if somebody has a really severe case of it, for sure. Absolutely. I've seen people, and I've included them in my book, people who were suicidal because of sad. Mm -hmm. One woman tried to hang herself, oh my. But, she, but she said, you know, I was so debilitated by sad, I couldn't even get myself together to make a noose. And luckily, wow. the next day was sunny. And I said, oh, my God, I'm so glad that I didn't do anything to myself. Because look, the sun is shining. I'm feeling good again. And so that was the one person. The other one stared down the barrel of a gun. And both of those people survived. But it was it's no joke. Uh, oh, I not. can tell you if you've got a bad case of sad, it is no joke. Certainly. You know, my, my sister just took a job last year up by Greenland. It's in Nunavut, northern Canada, uh, uh -huh. a place called uh, Iqaluit. Mm -hmm. And there's a small population of, well, I think, well, there's like shockingly, actually, there's like 8,000 people in that city. Um, and she has been there for a year and she has to move. She says um, she can't deal with uh, the darkness because, I mean, right. Greenland, right? It, it, it's too much. And the extreme of the summer where there's no no darkness. Right. Mm -hmm. um, she finds that people have a really high rate of alcoholism. 
right uh, wow yeah. says it's unbelievable she's a manager of a, of a grocery store in there and she has a hard time finding workers and she says she she for the first time in her life like she's 56 or 57 and she said for the first time in her life she's she feels so off balance because of the way of life up there and well not to mention the cold she wasn't uh, even though she thought she was prepared for the cold <laughs> she says i'm not i'm so not <laughs> so she's moving back to montreal but um she was quite surprised at what the darkness did to the people yeah yeah well that's that is right that is right and uh i'm so glad people are getting to know about it some people may be well adapted and don't feel it but a lot of people do and for those people who do i think it's really important to know that they can be helped and so shows like yours really bring that message to your clients and to your listeners and i'm very very delighted that i have been able to be a part of it and we're so grateful that you're on the show with us we're eager to learn more from you in our next segment <music> Stay tuned for more of Women Road Warriors, coming up. Kathy DeCaro is nothing short of amazing. She not only drives the world's biggest truck as a heavy equipment operator in northern Alberta, Canada, she's an international motivational speaker and the author of Dream Big an autobiography about overcoming a lifetime of trauma and abuse that led to dreams of success. Kathy inspires people the world over to change their lives and improve their self-worth. Her book will change your life. She's passionate about personal growth and believes anyone can change their circumstances and overcome their obstacles if they believe in themselves. Her life will amaze you and seriously inspire you. Be sure to order a copy of her book, Dream Big, on Amazon.com. Industry Movement Trucking Moves America Forward is telling the story of the industry, our safety champions, the women of trucking, independent contractors, the next generation of truckers, and more. Help us promote the best of our industry. Share your story and what you love about trucking. Share images of a moment you're proud of and join us on social media. Learn more at TruckingMovesAmerica.com. Welcome back to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. More people than you think suffer from seasonal affective disorder or SAD. They really feel the effects when the days get shorter. It's important to get properly diagnosed to get the help you need. We're talking with Dr. Norman Rosenthal. He's a world-renowned expert on the subject. He coined the term SAD in 1984, and he's written a lot of books on the subject. And Dr. Rosenthal, what is the name of your book again, and where will people be able to find that? Okay, the name of the book is Defeating SAD, Seasonal Affective Disorder, A Guide to Health and Happiness Through All Seasons. And they can literally find it anywhere where books are sold. So the online outlets, the independent bookstores will all be stocking it. And um, I've deliberately written it as a short book because I want it to be right to the point. Mm -hmm. And I'm just looking at it now. It's got a beautiful turquoise cover with a bright red orange sun in the middle. And uh, I wish people all uh, happiness through the winter and uh, a lack of SAD because it's treatable. You don't have to take, you don't have to suffer it. Well, I'll be buying two books, one for me and one for my friend that I was mentioning for sure. <laughs> give <laughs> and them maybe my a best, third one for give, my sister. <laughs> give them my best regards. <laughs> Dr. I will. Ro Dr. Rosenthal, you're a ray of sunshine, and I'm not sure. Uh, well, right thank there. you. I've really enjoyed talking with you ladies and wish you all the best. Yes, oh, thank, thank you, you so very much. I really appreciate it. Bye now. You've been listening to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. If you want to be a guest on the show or have a topic or feedback, 
email us at sjohnson at womenroadwarriors.com. Dot com.